and so we're back. Um, sorry for the bouncy camera. We finished the the drop, and as I said before, some of the springs were not uh, the repetition springs were, were off. Uh, so what I've been going through is adjusting the springs to get a good strong but not bouncing return. So as I play the note, as you can see here, oops, I imagine playing the piano, so I play that note and the hammer checks, and as I let off the key, it should pop up but not bounce quickly, and it is. That's about as fast, that's a bit too fast maybe, but I like it a bit fast. Um, it comes up but doesn't bounce. It cannot bounce. You don't want to bounce it because it could bounce against the string. Some of the adjustments that I made, I went through and adjusted these roughly earlier on and um, the process of freeing up some of the center pins, it, after a couple of days they've settled in again and that affected the spring tension on the repetition spring and that one is okay. A bit strong. Uh, I don't like that. It's too much. So I lift up the hammers out of the way and there's a spring here. Use this little spring tool to pop it out. Right there. The little hook. All it is is wire. It's a, a loop of copper wire and I'm just going to pull it back, bend it a bit, put more of a curve in it, and then put it back under that lever. It's there seated properly. There we go, clicked. And now it's going to be really fast. Just about right. Pops up swiftly, but doesn't bounce. It makes a really fast repeating action in the key. Now that one, look at the difference here. The one that I just adjusted has a quick rebound that does not bounce. And the one next to it, when we test it, it bounces up, but it comes up if it's not as fast. So I would like to, it's not going to be even. And these little adjustments like this maybe don't really matter that much, but on the whole, if you're paying attention and getting them at least even, the keyboard and the playing experience will also feel even, and that will be a pleasing experience for the person playing. That's me. And, um, make the piano more responsive, like an extension of the pianist's fingers. It is a machine, but like a good sports car that is carefully designed and constructed, it becomes an extension of the driver and is an incredibly fun and exhilarating driving experience. Well, the same with a good piano. It's, it's got a good design, first of all, which this does, and all the parts are aligned and set up in the position where they were designed to be, it comes together and functions. That's still not enough. Like a machine extraordinaire. So this is a, you could say that the, the Steinway is the Maserati of pianos. Not the only one, but certainly in America, the, nothing comes close to this. This is the piano that all others are judged against. Um, and it isn't to say that there aren't others that are just as good. There have been in their own way, but none other than this, this brand in the, in the United States and North America really has had the, um, has had the, the uh, credibility of a Steinway. And you know what? They're still making Steinways. Almost all of the other piano companies that existed are gone. There were over 2,000 piano manufacturers at the turn of the 20th century. Steinway and I think Mason and Hamlin are the only two left. All the others shut down. And of Mason, Hamlin, and Steinway, Steinway is still the best. Good. So that's got a nice purposeful spring in its step doesn't bounce.
Good enough. Good enough for the girl to go with, as Dad used to say. That's fine. And this one's got a funny clunk. I think it's the pad on the jack. So I'm not sure what's with that. Speed is fine. We'll leave it. It's going to wear into in the, over the next few months of playing. It's going to need some minor adjustments. So I'm not going to try and make this like a final um, final adjustment because it's going to need more. I've done quite a bit of changes to the settings and it's going to take a while for things to run in. It's like a new car, a new engine, it takes 5,000 miles before it really wears in. Well, this is definitely a worn-in piano, but I've gone through and made some really significant changes to the settings and it's going to take, again, a period of time and playing for the, for the settings to stabilize. Okay, see how it balances? That's too much. Just, I mean, I like it fast, but that's too much. So, I don't take the spring out again. I just kind of caress it to flatten it a little bit in place. Like that. It doesn't take very much. That's a little fast. I don't want to take too much off either, because it... Things could stiffen up a bit, and I need that extra tension. So, that's it. I will finish off the remainder of these, and then really, I don't have any other adjustments to do in the action. It's going to put together and reassemble the case, and tomorrow to uh, tune it. Um, and I'll show you what I did through to seat the um, strings on the plate. It threw it way out of tune, so it's going to need another pitch raise and tuning. Okay, that's it for tonight.